Welcome back, or just welcome if you're new here. I am Brandon Ray Nice. You are watching Overland Exposures, and today we're going to discuss do I really need all of this gear to film wildlife and adventure videos? The answer? Right after this. We've heard it all before, it's not the gear that matters, it's the story that matters. And while that remains true, I am going to show you some of the gear that I personally use to help tell my story. Doesn't mean that you need it, I'm just telling you how I use it and why. Let's start off with the big picture. This is something that I, as a creator, try to give the viewer every time I start a video. If you're watching an adventure vlog of mine or a documentary of wildlife, I am going to enter that scene with a giant shot of the landscape. I want you to know where I'm at. And how am I gonna do that? Usually with these. This offers me the biggest view for the buck. This is the Mavic Air. This one's the new FPV drone by DJI. I'm still learning how to fly this one a little bit better, but um, this one's more just for kind of unique views that aren't as dry as the, the drone views that we're all getting used to. Nevertheless, I use the drones to give the viewer the big picture. I want them to know where we're at. I want them to know the setting, the time of day. This is gonna set the tone for the rest of the video that they're gonna see. This gives them where we're at. We've already seen the big picture with the drone shot. Now we wanna put the viewer in that environment. This is gonna be a ground level shot. I'm gonna pan around, I'm gonna show you all the nuances of this place as if you were walking in it. The next shot that you're typically gonna see again uses a wide angle and it's going to place a person or an object that we're all used to seeing. Something that gives us an idea of the size and scope of what we're looking at. And now we have an idea of perspective. How big this place is, how small this place is. 1,004, 1,005, 1,006. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We went 1,010,000? 1, I think you meant 1,010. No. Was it 10,000? Ah! So we've got the big picture. We've got the ground level shot. We've put them in that environment by showing them the size and scope of it. Now we're gonna want to explore because people are naturally curious. And what better way to capture someone's curiosities than on a macro level? That's where I use the RX100 at 200 millimeters because I actually I actually don't own a macro lens. It's something that I've been saving up for and one of these days it's gonna happen. But until then, got some workarounds. That's one of them. The other one, 70 to 200. I'm gonna get as close as I can to that object, try and focus on it. This one's especially good in lower light conditions because it's uh, f2.8. So I, I use this one quite a bit. The third one that I use, and this is no secret to anyone, your cell phone can actually do a really, really bang up job on getting in tight and close on something, giving you a better idea of what it looks like on a macro level. So don't, don't rule this out. This is a great thing to use. Fun fact, this is where they shot Star Wars with the Ewoks on Endor and the speeder bikes. I actually just made that up. This is the part of the video where I'm either gonna narrate or I'm gonna give you a talking headshot explaining where I'm at, what I'm doing, and why. For this particular video, it might go something like this. Welcome back. Today we're on the coast of Northern California in the Redwoods on the search for a banana slug and the Roosevelt elk. We're going on a hike shortly. Stay tuned to see what we find next. Or so, I don't know. Or if it's a narration, it might go something like this. Today we're on the search. Northern California Redwoods for the not so elusive banana slug and an elk named after a president. Stay tuned as we hike through this ma magical, majestic forests. There's a gnome by a bridge. Look at that. <laughs> that was my David Attenborough. I found the first banana slug. I win. Look at it. Whoa. Crazy. They do get way bigger. That's kind of a smaller one. Wow. He's cool, though. Good eye, Mommy. What do you think of that? Is he cool? <laughs> yeah. Never, never seen a yellow slug before have you? Nope. Fun fact about the banana slug. 
It's the only slug in the world that doesn't taste like bananas. So don't eat it, it's gross. If you put it in your mouth, on your tongue, it will numb your tongue. You'll hallucinate. Really? Yeah. Is, it, is both of that true? I don't know. So cool. He's got like really small little microscopic stripes on him if you look really, really closely. Wow. If it's a video specifically for social media like YouTube, I always like to give sneak peeks of what we actually ended up filming. Just short little snippets in the very, very beginning of the video. I want them to know that I achieved my objectives and if they stick around long enough, they might get a chance to see them too even if it's a banana slug. We actually came here to try and photograph the Roosevelt elk, which is the largest variety of North American elk. Um, but they are actually not here at this park. They're hopefully gonna be a little bit down the road. So uh, this has been a fun pit stop. Check the banana slug off the list. Now, on to the elk. We've come to the part in the video where the viewer knows our objectives, they know where we're at and why we're doing what we're doing. Now we need to take them on the adventure. We need to go on the hike with them. We need to go on the Jeep drive with them. We need to show them the process of getting from A to B. And the way that I do that is typically with an Insta360 One X. And this is a really great tool to use because it's pretty mindless. It's almost like being able to film and then come back in at a later point in time and be your own cameraman. It's hard to wrap your head around, but trust me, it's a no brainer. You hit record, you clamp it on your tripod, you walk around, you get home, then you pick your shots. It's awesome. Or you can clamp it to a roll bar in the Jeep or mount it anywhere that you want. This thing is money. You must have one of these just for fun. I mean, highly recommend it. If anything else, it's a fun camera to use. Second thing I use, GoPro. This one's actually the Hero 7, which I think is kind of a sweet spot, that Hero 7, Hero 8. Uh, it's got great stabilization, it's got good colors, it's got the wide format, it's got the super wide, it's got the cinema. You know, it can color grade it pretty easily. You stick them anywhere you want. This is a no brainer, it's weatherproof too. So if you're in inclement weather, you don't have to worry about all of your gear getting ruined and you still get the shot. All right, we had a little change of plans. We actually ended up finding the elk. Unfortunately, they're on private property. Some big girl with a stick come out and hollered at me. So I figured probably be a good time to leave that place. Uh, maybe they'll move uh, until then. Can't really do anything about it. And they're too far away for me to actually get a good shot of them. So we'll try back maybe tomorrow. I did get to fly my drone though out here for the first time. It was epic. Oh. Lastly, I like to put my mirrorless camera on a Gorillapod with a wide angle lens, walk around with it. This comes in really handy sometimes because there are things along the way that I wanna get some B-roll of, and that setup can capture them a lot more professionally than the other two, and it works a lot better in low light. These two options, not good if you're in low light. Keep that in mind. Bad news is you're gonna be the guy walking around with a camera pointed at yourself on a Gorillapod. Hopefully though, you're deep enough into the wilderness where no one's gonna see that. On the way back home, we just got extremely lucky. The elk have moved into a parking zone. And here they are. That's one. Let's go take a closer look. I just paid $3,000 for a wide angle lens that shoots at f2.8. Why would I wanna shoot at f22 and lose all that gorgeous depth of field when I can apply an ND filter? And this is gonna act as sunglasses. What this essentially does is it helps me keep my frame rate to shutter speed ratio, which should be about double. So for example, I'm shooting at 24 frames a second right now on the EOS R5. And what I want my shutter speed to be is right around 50 because that is the closest I can get to doubling that. And that's gonna go for every frame rate. So if I'm shooting at 120, I want it to be as close to 240 as I possibly can get. Sometimes environments don't allow for that if I'm shooting at f2.8, so I need a variable ND filter. I chose a big one. That way I can use step down rings to put it on smaller lenses. That way I only have to buy one of these guys because I think this was about 200 bucks and I don't want to buy five of them. All right, 
This is the part that I don't like to talk about. You're gonna need a big lens. If you're into wildlife, you need to separate yourself from wildlife a little bit. Give yourself a little buffer, especially if it's dangerous wildlife. Not just that though, most of it's very scared of you. And you're gonna, you're gonna need to be far away probably to get your shot. That's where your gigantic zoom lens comes in. Now, if you're a photographer, you're gonna want like a prime lens. You're gonna want like a 600 F4 or like a 400 F2.8. And that's great, those are beautiful images, even great for video. The ability to zoom in and out as a filmmaker, a wildlife filmmaker, is huge. And that is why you will not see me purchasing a prime lens for wildlife. And I can't afford it. So just get a zoom if you're into the filmmaking, get the zoom. That's why professionals use like the 50 to 1000 millimeter, $70,000 Canon zoom lens. That's why they use it, because it's dynamic. And it allows for shooting in multiple situations. It's like a one and done. You don't have to carry the nine different lenses in a backpack through the jungle to get that shot. It's one lens. It's a big lens, but it's one. Buy me one, Canon, if you're listening. I love you. Up until this point, we've only talked about visual aids. Now let's talk about some of the audible aids. And I'm talking about microphones. In order to capture a scene and really immerse the viewer in it, you need them to feel like they're there. And a way that we can do that is by introducing some sounds. What are some of the sounds that you would be hearing? Do you hear the stream babbling in the background, some birds tweeting, maybe the wind and the pine needles? All of these things help add to the atmosphere and immerse the viewer. It sells it to them because without those, it doesn't really help the story move along at all. It feels naked. I personally use a few different types of shotguns. This is a Shure lens hopper. I've got the Video Micro, not the Micro from Dirty Jobs. The important takeaway is sound matters. Thanks again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. What gear are you using? What gear do you hope to add? What gear should I add, if any? I can't afford it. Please don't recommend anything. I'm gonna look at it on Amazon. I'm gonna tell the wife about it. She's gonna get upset. Don't do it. Thanks again for watching, you guys. See you on the next episode.